Carlos Sainz will have a bad time in 2025. Stop it, Betty. Stop it, Betty. Carlos Sainz will drive for Williams after Lewis Hamilton took his spot at Scuderia Ferrari for the 2025 Formula 1 season. Although Williams is an up and coming team, the problems they have faced this season and the issues they undoubtedly still have will give the Spanish race winner a bad time. Let's examine the problems and where I expect them to be in 2025. I'm Wimbo, here's 3 seconds to leave a like. As I said in the intro, Williams is an up and coming team with a lot of ambition. I have a lot of sympathy for them and I admire their intentions after being the worst team for a few seasons a few years ago. This season already started with a big problem. They started quite late with developing their car, the FW46, due to the lack of real world data to fine tune their adjustments. Williams used the winter break to move away from using spreadsheets to list their components. Their computer software is a little more sophisticated now. This hindered them a lot in the first races in the 2024 season. When Williams started using a new steering wheel with integrated screens, like all the other teams have, they had a lot of teething issues like brake balance problems. It took some time to get rid of them, where in 2023 the car was very fast on straights due to a simple floor and arrow, the 2024 car had better cornering ability. But that came with a cost. They lost some speed in the high speed sections. That's why we didn't see the peaks they had in 2023 on a circuit like Monza, for instance. The three drivers Williams employed in the 2024 season racked up a pretty hefty bill in damages due to many crashes. This caused them to have a huge shortage of parts and a lot of logistical problems. At one point, Logan Sargent couldn't race because his chassis was given to Alex Albon. The reason was that there was no spare chassis. A very bad look for an ambitious M1 team, if you ask me. Williams has been taken over by Doriel Toll Capital. I always struggle with that name. An investment group that aims to bring back the glory days of Williams racing. However, compared to the other big names in the sport, they have a small budget. They struggle with the underinvested facilities and outdated work practices. And that makes it hard to compete properly with the rest of the grid. Now, I love James Valls. That man can sell ice to an Eskimo. I love how he talks. And he talks a lot. And sometimes he talks too much. A few things happened this season which were pretty shameful, not just Logan Chassis going to Albon. The last big mistake I noticed was when Franco Colapinto, the driver who took over from Logan Sargent, begged his team to be pitted in the rain in Brazil but was ignored. He pleaded with them and was almost in tears when they kept telling him to stay out and then he crashed. Now, this crash was good for Max Verstappen, but I did feel sorry for the kid. Imagine being in a Formula 1 car for such a short time, having to stay on track on worn inters. That was a big mistake from Vowles and his crew, and I'm surprised that nobody really caught on to this. Williams Racing hasn't been at the front for so long now, their strategy team is way smaller than those of the big teams. The people who work there are most likely less experienced, so it's no wonder these mistakes happen. I'm sure some of these problems will be solved or will be solved for the 2025 season. It's a fact that Williams isn't a powerhouse like for instance Mercedes is, but even they struggle. James Vowles is very optimistic about the future of Williams Racing. He said in interviews that he feels his driver lineup is the strongest on the grid now that Carlos Sainz has signed. Paired up with Alex Albon, who has been there for years now, they can drive the team forward. Carlos Sainz's experience is expected to be a great help to the team based in Grove. The ongoing developments should help get rid of a lot of troubles they had in recent years. This all sounds wonderful, but somehow I'm not convinced. The competition is miles ahead when it comes to a lot of things, and even they struggle to catch on with the top four. I think when one difficulty is fixed, two other obstacles appear. Cars do not necessarily become faster when something is solved. We saw that with the speed they used to have on the straights. A car can become faster overall and still score no points because of the lack of peak performances. Tom Stallard, Sainz engineer at McLaren, has revealed that he expects Williams to gain a ton of technical knowledge with the Spaniard driving there. He says Carlos is a big asset to the team and can steer the technical department in the right direction. 
One big reason why Saints will have a bad time is that Valve has said immediate results for 2025 will suffer to ensure a stronger future in the regulations. James Vowell said, and I quote, it's the message that Alex and Carlos both know. 2025 will be a struggle, I think. So if the team principal says this, then you know you're not gonna get podiums. It's as simple as that. It's still the best seat for Carlos Sainz in 2025 due to the lack of availability in other seats. I just think he's gonna have a bad time in 2025. Carlos Sainz has won four races in his career and set a pole position six times. The Ferrari cars he drove in previous years were very fast at times, but he also had a fair share of tricky trades to deal with. This explains why he's been off track so many times and the number of crashes over the years. Now he will be presented with a lesser car with a lesser strategy team against a settled teammate. If the car turns out to be all right, he still has to fight Alex Albon, who is completely at ease at the Williams team. Teammate fight is something that will take a lot of energy out of you, I can imagine. I also believe that Saints driving style doesn't go well with a tricky car. He's not one of those drivers who can get the best out of any package he drives. I hope for his sake that he and Albon can keep the damages to a minimum and that the lack of spare parts doesn't raise his ugly head again. It's clear that Williams isn't financially strong like Ferrari and McLaren, his previous teams, and it's something that he needs to get used to. Carlos Sainz has always been good at reading races when he's fighting up front. He doesn't like it when teams start inventing. I think he'll have a much harder time with this team and driving in the midfield. Besides having more accident prone drivers around him, the strategy is much harder to oversee when there are 10 cars in front and 9 cars behind you. And even if Williams doesn't have the stumble blocks that I just described, they'll still not compete at the front. For a guy who's used to having a shot at podiums and pole positions, it must be hard to get used to cheering for a P8 finish. That's the reality of Carlos Sainz's new situation next year. I'm sure he'll make the best out of it, and his times at Ferrari weren't always the best either. But this is a clear step down in a driver's career that should be at his peak. We will see a grumpy look on his face at times next season. And he'll wish that Hamilton would have just retired at Mercedes instead of grabbing his seat. He has a lot of obstacles to overcome, which is still better than the alternative, which is having no seat. Subscribe. Take care now. Doei doei. If you want early access to my videos or a behind the scenes special vlog, try my membership for a while. You won't be disappointed.